Hello and welcome to prayer time at First United Methodist Church. I'm Terry Bevel, an associate pastor here, and we're glad that you are here today and pray, pray that this will be a spiritually rewarding time. Our scripture verse this morning will be one verse read twice, once in the New Revised Standard Version and once in the King James Version. From 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Jeshana, and named it Ebenezer, for he said, Thus far the Lord has helped us. And from the King James Version, Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mishpah and Shen, and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. But it's not so much about the word of God, but it's about the words that we use. Were it not for a hymn written in 1758 called Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, or from Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol, were it not for those two pieces, we would probably never have heard of the word Ebenezer. There is Ebenezer Scrooge in the Christmas story. There are a couple of mentions of Ebenezer in the Bible as a place, although scholars aren't sure that it is a place. But what an Ebenezer is, is confusing to most people. The scripture passage relates to a time when the Israelites, under the command of the prophet Samuel, defeated the Philistines. And so, Samuel took a moment and raised an Ebenezer. I was listening to Pray As You Go, a, a devotional podcast. I wish I did it every day, but I don't. But I was listening to it a few days ago, and Salt of the Sound, this hauntingly beautiful musical group, was singing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. It was early in the morning, and so I closed my eyes and listened along to the words, and some of them weren't the same as what I was used to. So I looked back at the lyrics, and they had changed the words, Here I raise mine Ebenezer, to Here I raise to thee an altar. I'm sure somebody objected to that. Somebody said, oh, we shouldn't change the ancient hymns. Well, people don't talk the same way now as they did in the 17 and 1800s. Our language changes. An Ebenezer literally means stone of help. It's a monument. It's an altar. Most people don't know what an Ebenezer is, but they know what an altar is, or at least they have some idea of what it's about. And so my thought was for all of us that as we speak of faith to those who might be interested, and maybe some who are not, but as we show and talk about our faith, that we use language that people understand, that we don't try to be smarter or know more than we are or do, that we just speak simple truth. There's enough that's complicated about the kingdom of God. The last shall be first, the first shall be last. Not only love your neighbor, but love your neighbor as yourself, love your enemy. Walk the extra mile, turn the other cheek. There's enough that's confusing about the kingdom of God. We don't need to make it more so by using language that no one understands. Amen.
As we come into our prayer time, these are the concerns that we have for this week. Linda Varner had a heart catheterization yesterday. Jim Warren is a member of our church, now at Givens, seems to be okay after two trips to the hospital last week. Lyndon Dean has a blood pressure issue that seems to be getting under control. And Diane and Doug Garner have a relative, David Tanner, who has cystic fibrosis, which is spread throughout his body, and he is in hospice care. And we remember and will pray for the family of Jeff Bennington, who died this past Monday, early in the morning. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Ever caring Lord, our list of immediate prayer concerns is rather short this week, perhaps by the ebb and flow of these kinds of things. But neither our concerns nor yours are only about the immediate. Whether many or few, those listed every week represent only a small portion of those for whom we pray. We do not know all the afflictions of everyone in this church, nor do we remember well enough that many of our burdens last much longer than a week. Some surgeries take months to recover from, if there is recovery at all. Some diseases are slow and relentless, and we don't get over them in a matter of weeks. Nor are all our prayers about physical recovery. There are some who bear emotional burdens that they may not even acknowledge to themselves let alone reveal to us. And so we pray this week, reminding ourselves that those for whom we have prayed weeks or months ago still appreciate our prayers. You do not forget them, and neither should we. On this day, we also remember as part of our prayer all those who are dealing with cancer. We pray that the Bennington and Coffee families would feel your sustaining presence as they grieve the death of Jeff, and that through your spirit they would take comfort in your eternal promises. And we pray now for those who we know that are receiving cancer treatments. We pray their names as part of our prayer, for they are all people who we love, and they are always more than names on a list. Hear, O Lord, our prayers for Brenda Griswold, Nancy Ray, Sandy Forrest, Anne Dismuke, Robert Clauser, Ted Nabor, Christopher Holt, Reed Taylor, Sandy Brady, Stephen, Mike, Scott, May, Scotty, Irene Noland, Colton Jenkins, Barbara Malden's sister, Pat Marone, Ricky Pollard, Joe, Daryl, Lolly Hoover, Kyle Thompson, Marvin Matlack, Chris Eulery. For these, we pray boldly and simply, as your Son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Thank you for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day.